Good morning, everybody. Welcome to The Flow Show. Here we go again. Another week begins. And we'll see what big data is coming up and uh, what we're going to get our teeth stuck into this week. Uh, unfortunately, no Mr. K-Man today. He's uh, suffering from uh, the old dreaded lurgy, uh, the old COVID doing around, it seems. So uh, he's unfortunately off uh, sick today. We obviously wish him a speedy recovery. So just me, myself and I today to get you through uh, this week's or today's flow show. Right. As you can see there, I just want to reiterate um, our big sale that we've got going on this week or going on this month. Um, you can grab yourself uh, up to 40% off an annual subscription. So it's never been a better time to get a good price. And obviously we lock in that price for you. So this isn't just a new customer offer where you take this price and then we bump it up when it comes to renewal time. Um, as long as you subscribe, you will keep that price forever uh, and ever as long as you subscribe. So uh, once you're in on a decent price, you can stay on that decent price for as long as you subscribe. Anyway, let's get cracking. I'm um, going to start with a bit of data. Um, over the weekend or overnight, we had uh, China CPI data, uh, which came in softer than expected, 0.6% versus 0.7% expected. That was up on last month's 0.5%. Um, month on month inflation also coming in a bit softer than expected. PPI too coming in worse than expected. So still some disinflationary or deflationary price uh, pressures over in China. And that will keep potential rate cuts on the table. So it's not quite... Uh, ready to let off the hook rate cuts from over there or take their foot off the pedal for rate cuts are over there. These numbers still very, very weak for an economy as big as China. And we did get some final numbers from Japan, Q2 GDP, uh, which no one is really that bothered about uh, considering we're pretty much uh, close to ending Q3. So, but uh, even so, that's GDP coming in a little worse quarter on quarter and year on year. So um, just a little bit of softening, but uh, final numbers still showing positive growth. And that's the main thing compared to the first quarter. And uh, that's something that uh, will keep the Bank of Japan on their path. Um, there was a bit of data out last week from the Eurozone. Well, I say a bit of data. Bloomberg put together some data from some Eurostat numbers uh, for the Eurozone. Um, they made it into they made it into a story that uh, a key wage measure for the ECB came in softer. Um, now, this number came in at 4.3%, down from 4.8%. Uh, now, they based that, don't ask me how, they based that on some Q1 data uh, or the first three months of the year uh, to produce this Q2 number. So, I don't know if it's the official number or what, but being ECB week this week, um, the market will be looking for any signals uh, that gives clues about future policy moves in the ECB. Um, we are expecting them to cut rates at the meeting by 25 pips. That's probably not the important thing. The important thing is how they see the future for further rate cuts. Uh, obviously, it's a... Uh, staff projection meeting, forecast meeting. So uh, they'll be basing all their potential future decisions on that. Uh, so that's going to be what's going to be important on Thursday. Um, right, coming over to more data and uh, looking at yes, uh, yesterday's, last week's stuff. Um, we got, I'll uh, we'll start with the uh, Canada jobs data first before we get stuck into the NFP stuff. Um, Employment over there, the net change was up 22,000, uh, which was there were thereabouts expectations, turning around the loss from the prior month. Um, on the uh, Magic Roundabout, the uh, part-time and full-time looked a bit more negative, um, with full-time employment dropping and part-time employment gaining. Uh, if you want to see a strong market, you want to see full-time employment uh, doing much better than part-time employment. Obviously, if they're both positive, that's a uh, double positive. Um, but that drop in full-time employment, um, not making the report look as good. Um, or as I say, it's a bit of a uh, roundabout or revolving door, shall we say. These numbers can be up and down 
each month. Um, the unemployment rate rose to 6.6%, but that was followed by the participation rate going up a pip as well. So that might have added something into that. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily make it uh, a massively negative number, that unemployment rate rising. Um, on the wages front, um, we saw wages coming in at 4.9% down from the prior 5.2%. So still quite a hot number, uh, but not as much as it was last month. So it's going the right way. As we know, the BOC are cutting anyway and are happy to continue doing so. So this data doesn't really move the needle on that at all. Um, and now we come to the NFP, which uh, it was built up to be uh, a bit of a wild one. And uh, it was a bit of a wild one in markets after the data um, and really all over the shop. It got to the point in the afternoon when I just said, I've had enough um, market swinging one way, then swinging the other way bit of a headless chicken moves in the end. So uh, I just said, no, I've had enough. I'm, I'm not trading this anymore. Um, it can go and do its thing and I'll pick up the pieces today. So the number itself coming in at 142,000, um, which is not bad, really. Um, we were expecting 164, 165. So it was a bit of a miss. Um, that prior month's number got revised down quite a chunk though so that was a bit negative um, overall not too bad it could have been worse and I think that's the uh, the main line to apply to this data it could have been worse um, we saw the unemployment rate coming in at 4.2 percent as expected so if there were a lot of people looking for uh, something worse again they didn't get it we got uh, a drop down in the unemployment rate um, obviously Looking at the participation rate, they stayed unchanged as well, which makes that number uh, all the more better, shall we say, rather than uh, good, um, because it didn't affect that number at all. Um, wages, that came down, uh, oh, sorry, that went up, beat expectations, beat last month, went up to 3.8%, and the month-on-month -month number as well going up 0.4%. So, Overall, none of this data is 50 basis point cut data. And uh, it was quite funny because the initial reaction um, in the dollar was to rally straight away on the number. We saw dollar yen. Let's go into, uh, into it there. We saw a bit of a jump higher. Then it was slammed down. Or oh, it might have gone the other way. It was going so fast. And as you can see, we were up and down and up and down and up and down. So the market... Uh, started pricing 50 basis points in the interim uh, and then it changed it right around but I'll go over that in a moment um, because not long after the data we got uh, some of the some of the more big week Fed members speaking just before the blackout that started on Saturday first we had Fed Williams coming out saying that uh, the Fed is ready to start the process of rate cuts and that the jobs data is consistent with a cooling economy um, says we are moving in the right direction, but not there yet on 2% inflation. So while he's saying jobs market is weakening, they're not quite there on inflation. Um, he says lowering rates is about helping to keep the jobs market in balance. And then he came out with a line where he said he doesn't have a personal view on 25 pips versus 50 pips. Now, the dubs in the market took that as meaning, well, that means 50 pips is on the table. So off they went again and sold the dollar, yields dropped, and uh, the market got all dovish. Um, he then followed up, said the Fed has no general principle on fast versus gradual moves. So the market was uh, jinking around. And then later on, we got Fed's Waller, who doesn't speak often, but when he does, he can tend to move markets or he does say something that the markets pay attention to. And the first headlines, depending on who, uh, what wires you read them for, sounded pretty dovey. She said, the current batch of data requires action. He says, if appropriate, he will advocate for front-loading cuts. And then he said he is open-minded about the size and pace of cuts. Again, that got the market doves all happy and uh, hitting yields and the dollar. He says, it's important, for, important to start rate cuts at the next Fed meeting but we must be nimble on policy as the data comes in, saying that forecasts could be wrong. 
He said, in a long run, longer run view, 100K monthly jobs, K jobs gain is normal. Um, now, going back to that line where he said, if appropriate, he will advocate for front loading cuts. As I said, that was that was reported on one wires like that. But then another wire had a bit more detail. And he said that uh, while it is appropriate and will advocate for front loading cuts, he will do that in the same way that it was appropriate and had advocated for front loading hikes. So pretty much saying that uh, what he was happy to do on the hike side, he's happy to do on the cut side. Um, so that took a bit of the dovish thing out of it. Uh, it wasn't as incendiary as those headlines first pertained. But anyway, as I said, rate moves went a bit bonkers. Um, and I actually, I actually noted the, the timeline. So at 13.41, and this is uh, London time, so uh, that's, what, 11 minutes after the NFP, traders priced in a 50-point rate cut for the Fed. Just over an hour later, hour and five minutes later, give or take, they reversed that back down to 25 pips. Um, then we got Waller, and at 16.05, they rated it up or raised it up to pricing 50 basis point cuts in September. Four minutes later, that reversed and they went back down to pricing 25 pip cuts. Um, all the while, the market is jumping up and down over this, hence why I said, no, that's, uh, that's too messy for me. I'm not, I'm not getting involved in that. Um, I did have a trade over the NFP when the market was getting all dovish. Um, I got in some dollar yen uh, down in the 142.20s. Managed to ride that up to near 144, 143.80s, I think I got up to um, before all these comments came out and uh, the market went the other way. So there was money to be made, um, but you had to be you had to be a bit quick about it and you couldn't hang around taking uh, profit either. But uh, where do we finish? We finished down on the lows on Friday and coming into today. So... That's where we came in, and so it looked like we might be having a bit of a continuation there. Um, we got, we couldn't get below. This was all the lows we got to in dollar yen um, last month when we had that, what the market took as a bad NFP report, an ISM jobs report. So we couldn't, the fact we couldn't quite get down to that low uh, is pretty telling. Um, it's become a big boundary now. And these sort of things you need to be keeping an eye on because this tells you what the market wants to do it was happy to keep selling the dollar but it ran into something pretty tough down here it ran into something a month ago and it's run into it again so this is now becoming a big old level down here call it 142s 141.70s okay so this is this is our marker now moving forward okay we, we don't really know we've got a rough idea where some of the highs are but with the volatility that we've still got in play. Uh, we're still trading up 12.5% uh, on the one-month falls. Um, you know, we can still move up to 300 pips pretty quickly. But the fact we've come through two lots of data and what it means for the Fed and we haven't cracked this level um, makes it very important moving forward. So that's your boundary to the downside now. Break that and we're probably heading lower and uh, maybe quite significantly but we've got plenty of tech underneath it as well. So this morning, the dollar's looking a little bit better. Um, whether it's a dead cat bounce or not remains to be seen. I think right now the 50 pit cutters uh, have been uh, given a good kick up the arse and shoved out the market. So the market's taking it all together and saying, yeah, 25 pit cut is more likely from the Fed. Um now, what, that, what that's going to do is going to make any more price in the 50s um, potentially, again, a fade trade because the market's going, no, the jobs market isn't collapsing. Um, even if CPI uh, is, a, is a soft one, I still don't think we're going to properly price 50 basis points. I think we might get another reaction where it, uh, the market goes that way again, but I don't think that will last. Um, so that's how I'm potentially going to start off this week with that view in mind. Again, any extremist pricing towards 50s, I'm going to look to uh, potentially fade it. And uh, obviously, you've got that CPI on Wednesday. Um, right, while we've 
got it there. Might as well uh, have a little look and see what data we got coming up. Because usually after the NFP week, it gets a bit quiet. But uh, we're in the tail end of the year and things tend to uh, wind up a bit, uh, get a bit busier. So tomorrow we have uh, German CPI data. That's the final number from Germany. Um, UK jobs report, that's going to be quite important. It's still a bit of a mess. Our uh, bungling ONS still haven't got their uh, abacus fixed. So we don't know what the data really is saying, but the market's going to move on whatever numbers it's given. Uh, keep an eye on the wages data. As always, that's going to be the most important number there. Uh, on Wednesday, we get more UK data GDP. This is just the monthly rolling number. Uh, we get some industrial production, manufacturing production data as well. Um, so, again, we've got the BOE next week. So all this data is going to have a bit more significance uh, with that in mind. We do get UK CPI a day before the Bank of England next week. Um, so that could could be a bit of a big number, but uh, that's for next week. Um, and as I said, on Wednesday, we have US CPI. That's going to be the big data of the day. Um, expectations are for CPI to drop a bit um, to 2.6%. Um, I've got from 2.9% uh, is the number we're currently at. So a bit of a dip to 2.6%. Core number is expected to come in unchanged at 3.2%. Uh, but again, we'll look at that in more detail on Wednesday. Um, then Thursday, it's going to be the ECB and as I said, not so much what they do with rates at the meeting. Um, there always, there's always room for a bit of a shock. Um, but what the policy is going to be going forward, are they going to cut again quickly or are they going to sit on their hands uh, until their next forecast in December? Uh, jobless claims, we always keep a half an eye on that one. Not that it's showing much at the moment. Uh, but then we get PPI data. Uh, and it's back to normal this month, coming after the CPI rather than last month where it came before. So that might add or subtract something to whatever we've seen in the CPI data if there's a big variation. Uh, and then on Friday, we get uh, not a lot. Um, final numbers from France, uh, some import export price data, and this will be the flash uh, Michigan Consumer Sentiment Survey, so the first one of the month and so we get a little look at what the consumers up to ahead of the fed uh, ahead of the fomc next week and uh, obviously we'll keep an eye on those uh, interest rate expectations that we get from that data um so that's what we've got uh, coming up there um just give me one second uh, i'm just going to have a little look because uh, i did invite a guest on uh, and I just don't know, he didn't answer my WhatsApp until just now, so I don't know if he's here or not. So let me just see if he's here. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Let me see if he's here. Two seconds. No, he's not. One second, folks. Shall we? I'm trying to WhatsApp and uh, run the show at the same time. Right. Okay. Well, if he pops in, he pops in. Otherwise, uh, I'll bring him on another day. Um, so moving on, let's have a look at what uh, is happening in prices. Um, so as mentioned, dollar yen. So we've got this very important support down here now. Um, keep an eye on that. Where we bounce to is anyone's guess. Uh, 144s at the moment is the main resistance point. Uh, just on the short term, we have got this little level here, 143, 40s call it, um, just when we had this move, then it bounced, we came down, found a bit of support there, knocked around it, just having trouble breaking through at the moment. Um, so while it's a little bit quiet, that might be a bit of a sticky area, otherwise it's going to be 144s, 144s, 20, uh, then up into the 145 big figure. So there's a few levels you, you might want to just stick to sort of mainly looking around the big figures at the moment because uh, that seems to be where we run into a bit of trouble mostly or where we see the big traffic areas. Obviously, 147 got up to 147.20s in that move at the beginning of last week before we saw this big collapse. So 
Dolly Yen, it's going to really, if you want to get a picture of that, keep an eye on yields um, because it's pretty much a mirror image. Now, two-year yields managed to break that prior low that we got in August. Um, so that's a bit more of a significant move. It's just it's just shown that the market is willing to push this a bit more, um, even though we've got a bounce and we're back above this sort of 360 level, which is a bit of a level. As you can see, we've got a bit of an area here, 350s, 360s. So the fact we're back above just makes that look like a little bit of a fake out for the moment. But this is the market. This is where the market's really playing the 25, 50 pip cuts. Okay, so if always keep, you should always have uh, yields on a chart somewhere uh, just to keep an eye on because this, this tells you, this has been leading a lot last week of what's going on. Um, so that's reflective in uh, the yen pairs as well. 10 years, it looks a bit further down the line. Again, it also had a little bit of a, a shunt below that low that we got last month, but we've had a bit of a bounce. So this 370 area, we can test it, we can go below it, but for now we can't hold below it. And so that's going to keep your dollar from going too far as well. So while we're holding above that 370, um, the dollar's unlikely to continue going lower. What is likely though is that any decent rally we get in yields is going to continue to get hit. So people are going to come in and buy bonds. And I, as I mentioned a few times last week, um, that's what, that's really what the market was doing. You know, we saw the move in the dollar last week, but it was, it was still doing it even around some of the data. And just for my mind, it, it meant that we weren't the 25 and 50 pit weight trade that we're doing is all short term stuff. The longer term, bigger money is doing something different. It's getting into yield. It's buying bonds either to make money on the price going up or to lock in higher yield because rates are coming down. So there was there was two forces at, at play, in my opinion, last week. And the bigger force was bigger money coming in and locking into yields, um, more so than the short termers playing the uh, 25, 50 pip game. The 25, 50 pip game was why we were seeing all that jumpiness over Friday's price action up and down and up and down and rate expectations changing that quickly. That's all short term traders. Longer term traders are doing something more. They're trending yields lower. They're trending the dollar lower. So keep that in the back of your mind. OK, you, you, you're potentially playing with two different markets at the moment. One playing the short term data points, one playing something longer. Um, looking at the euro, that was looking a bit iffy this morning amid that dollar bid. Um, we came down to pretty much down to support and hit it on the head. If we can get there or hit it on the arse because it was coming down. Um, so this support, 110.40s down to those lows there, 25s, 30s, whatever it is, this little area here. We came down here this morning. We found a bounce off of there. Again, it's looking a bit dead cat at the moment, but in technical terms, the support level is holding, uh, and that's all that really matters right now. So I think if we maintain above here, then we're going to keep in this 112 range down to this 110.5, 110.40 area um, and run that either over the data or the ECB. So... Again, this has come through all the US data, all the Eurozone data, NFP reports, everything, and it's still sitting in this tight range. So for me, I'm just going to be planning maybe to trade a break either side of the range. I'm more inclined to trade a break through 112 because it's the bigger level. Um, if we just come over to the uh, daily, you can see how that 112 is a big old level. Uh, it goes back and back and back and back. Let's put it on my clean charts and you get a better idea there. So this 112 level, spoken about it often enough. That's why I wanted to short up there when we first tapped it. So I'm more inclined to trade a break above there uh, than I would a break down through short-term support around that 110.40 area. I'll just zoom in again. Because um, if we do break below here, and this being the euro, um, unless it's being driven by big news, then, you know, we run into traffic down in the low 110s into the figure uh, down towards the 50 fib. So there's a, there's a bit more traffic to the, 
get a downside move, then perhaps there would be a break on an upside move. Um, but, you know, whatever floats your boat, if you're looking to be short and you're not short now, then uh, a break of this area is one area to be looking at, uh, you know, get below and start to hold below this area, then uh, you're probably going to get a shove a bit further down. But keep in mind, we're still in a, a got two uptrends, if you like. We've got the first phase here and we've got the second phase here. So take it overall. We're in still in this uptrend. So even if we do break lower here, um, you know, watch out your fibs. Your fibs will decide whether this, chen, this trend is turning around. And, uh, you know, I can probably lob another one on there quickly. Oh, get in there. Mondays. I love Mondays. So the 38.2 of this whole move is down at 109.97. Okay, so that comes in pretty much around the 110 area. So we got a bit of confluence there. You got the 50 fib. Of this of this phase, and we got the thirty eight point two of this phase, all pretty close together, and around a big figure that's had plenty of resistance before. So that's a big area. So if you get a break here, I'd expect it to run into trouble in around here. Okay. Um, what else? What else? Let me just uh, go back to uh, let's the chat. See what anyone's going on about. Um, Ali, who have I invited? I'm keeping it a secret. I'm keeping it a secret, mate, until he comes on. Um, what did happen with you on Friday? I got knocked out the final part of my um, short from 112. Um, I had my trailer at 111.30. That got knocked out in this move here. Um, it wouldn't have mattered where I put it, either side of this line. Um, it would have got knocked out. Um, so I just put it at 111.30 because that's – as much as I wanted to give back. So uh, I, not a bad run. I got it. My last cut was uh, 46. So just into that level there. So 10, 15 pips off the lows. I'm not going to complain about that. Um, so I'm flat on uh, that trade for now. Uh, I'm still short Euro Sterling, Ali. Um, you cut your position. Yeah. It's, it's grinding. It's grinding. I've got uh, my stop on my shorts at 84.60. Um, no, it's not. It's 84.65. I moved it up because uh, we were talking about this 84.60 level last week. Just in there. So a bit of a level. So I had my stop bang on it. Uh, and as Mr. K-Man pointed out, it was a bit of a level. So now my stop is just above it because uh, I don't want to put it bang on the level, find out it hits and then reverses down. Um, the UK data this week, could be a mover for you for uh, this one, depending on what it is um, and what it means for Bank of England cuts. So if we get weak, weak data, then this one is probably heading back higher. Um, and obviously with the ECB in the mix too, it could be uh, one that's all over the place at the moment. If I do get knocked out of that, then I'm probably just going to go neutral again, sit on my hands and look to continue to play the range. Um, I may consider now trying longs down into 84 handle um, again with uh, a stop reverse through 83 80s uh, to go short on that one um, otherwise we've got this middle area 85s 84 80s that's really your, your pivot point for whether we're going to have a look at 86 or stay weak and carry on looking at uh, 84s um Marcus, look at dollar Noki. Let's have a look at the old dollar Noki. What's going? What you got cooking in there, mate? Oh, a bit of a decent rally up in that one. Again, we're seeing a lot of dollar pairs doing the same thing. You know, this is one of those times where things like other the other side of the currency um, pretty much takes a, a bit of a back seat, um, and it's all about what's going on with the Fed and the dollar pretty much like it was when we had the, uh, the hike cycle, you know, everything was about the dollar, not so much the other currencies. Um, you're long at 66. Nice trade mate. Um, so where's this one going to go then? Let's uh, zoom it out again. Not got a lot of techers on here, but, uh, always happy to, uh, draw some lines. Um, so what we got going on up here, not a lot to the top. So it's all a bit, Messy. If you want to take the wider ranges, the wider edges, then you know you're looking up here, 111 tens, 111 fourteens. Um, 
this is a bit short term to put a fib on it. Let's uh, stick one on anyway. Let's stick it from there. So it's already up through the, the 50 fib of this move. So you got the 61.8. Um, I don't know if you've got targets or anything like that, Marcus, but uh, you've got a decent bit of margin in here at the moment. Um, you probably want to keep an eye on this area down here for any retracements, just those little highs there that we managed to break just in the short term. So if, you, if you're long, you don't want it to get back below there. Uh, and particularly the, the 70 figure as well. So nice nice grab, mate. Long at 66, you've got plenty of margin. I want to see you running that as far as it can go, mate. Don't get out too early. You're in a winning trade. Try and run it as far as you can. You know, use trading stops. Bring your stops up behind it. I don't know how much you probably need to give it a good uh, 20 handles um, behind perhaps... Uh, the current price so you know if it's trading up here 78 you know you want to keep your trailer well you can probably put your trailer at break even maybe or or just above but yeah play the range up a line yeah if you can run it up to there fantastic trade mate um but uh if you can do it slice and dice you know take some if you haven't already you know there's nothing wrong with taking a bit of profit off the table reducing your risk moving your stop up a little bit you don't have to bring it all the way up to near the price, but just move that trade up, take that profit and uh, move your stop up. So, uh, yeah, 1071. I don't know, it's, it's right on that fib and we got that level there. So uh, it's up to you. I can't tell you how to trade, mate, but if it was me, I'd have my stop just below that. So maybe, maybe just below 1070. Uh, and if you get and hold above, 1080 then maybe bring your stop up a little bit it's all about just trying to as the price steps up you step your, your stop up but respect the levels now if you're going to respect these levels to trade against you need to respect them to take profit against uh, as well uh ali what you got going on in gold mate where have you where have you popped that one let's have a look gold 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 is gold going higher i don't know is it going lower at the moment? It can't do either. Um, so really, this is this is where you don't need bias. And we've been talking about this for, for several weeks now. You don't need a bias for this one, okay? You can keep a long bias because the bigger picture, we're still in an uptrend. So you can keep a, a long bias to this one um, if that's what you want. But just for trading this range... All you need is if we break above there, chances are we're going much higher. If we break below there, chances are we're going to go much lower. So even if you're not in a trade, you know, don't get you don't need to be, oh, I'm only going to buy it. Fine, buy it on support or buy a break. But if you get up here and it doesn't break through here, well, there's nothing wrong with trying to short then and just playing this range. That's all it's doing. It's walking in the range. So um I don't know what. Uh, I don't know whether it's expected to go higher or not. It's probably expected to go higher because everyone's long, um, so everyone's expecting to go higher. So, what are you going to do if it doesn't go higher? That's that's the question you need to ask yourself, Ali. It's all right saying I think it's going higher. The, the important question is what if it doesn't? What am I going to do if it doesn't go higher? Or how can I profit if it doesn't go higher? So, as I said, it's pretty simple. Trade the range. We either break out here or we break out below there or we trade between the goalposts. Um, right, let's see what else you're going on about. Good, good. Um, right, I don't know what else uh, to have a look about, so we might just call that a show for today. Um, as I said, it's, I'm pretty in the mood now. I've, I've not got much on. Um, I've got a bit of uh, a cable short on, something we're just uh, playing in our room today. Um, and I got me short Euro sterling. Apart from that, I'm a bit flat. So for me, it's just going to be looking around, looking at some of the ranges. You know, Aussie's looking like it's got a bit of a breakdown at the moment, but we've got a big level here, 66 and a half, 66, 45, 50. Um, so if, uh, if the price is going to do something there, have I got the wrong one? Oh, come on, you bugger, that one. 
and what we've got going in there. So look at that. It's amazing how tech works sometimes. So this is a big level on its own, 66, 40, 50, and it's also a 38.2 fib. So it's a bit of confluence there. <clears throat> I always love it when uh, levels like that line up. I didn't even know it was there, see? So this one, decision time down here at that. If we hold here, it keeps the trend in play. Maybe we bounce, maybe we go on to new highs. You know where the resistance is, 68s. 68.20s, that's the big area. It's a bit like 112, 110 in the euro dollar. Similar picture. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kiwi as well. I was talking about this 62, 62.14, this zone down here. Broke it. We had a bit of messing around. We've broken it. It's looking like it's starting to resist. So when that happens, you get more downside. Um, how far it can go is anyone's question. So uh, it's all about how much it can go after it starts breaking down. But all that does for the longer term, it just confirms this area is still pretty solid, even if we get some moves above it. We cannot stay above there for long. So on that note, you just trade the range. Try selling it up here. Hopefully you try buying it down there if you get it or taking profit on the way. Um, right, Marcus, you like uh, pound kiwi. <sighs> Blimey, pound kiwi, mate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you to that one. I might, uh, I might answer you that one in the room while I have a look at it. I probably even got a chart ready for that one. Right, we shall call it a day for today. Um, I will try and uh, maybe drum up my guest for tomorrow. Uh, no, Ali, if you're in early, as I said, Kay's got uh, the lurgy, so uh, hopefully that won't keep him uh, out of things for too long. He should be back uh, hopefully sometime this week. Right, have a good one, everybody. Have a great week. Trade safe, trade well, and uh, we'll catch you all tomorrow. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.